Hi, welcome back. In this video, we are going to explore Spring Boot Auto Configuration. So Spring Boot Auto Configuration is very very important concept. You have to understand Spring Boot Auto Configuration. Alright. So Spring Boot provides Auto Configuration feature. And this is a very very important feature. So as a beginner, you have to understand Spring Boot Auto Configuration in order to, you know, in order to explore how Spring Boot works behind the scene. Well, what is Spring Boot Auto Configuration? Spring Boot Auto Configuration attempts to automatically configure your Spring applications based on the Jar dependencies that you have added in the class path. Okay, so Spring Boot Auto Configuration it you know automatically configures your spring based application based on the dependencies or the jar dependencies that you provide in a class path well before you know exploring spring boot auto configuration let's first take a look into why do we need spring boot auto configuration so if you have already worked on spring framework or spring based applications then you have seen that spring based applications have a lot of configuration okay so let me show you a spring based application without spring boot so look at here this is spring muc hibernate crude web application so this is the project i have developed using spring muc hibernate okay i haven't used spring boot in this project and you can find this project on my github profile so go to spring muc tutorial and in this tutorial repository you can find spring mvc hibernate crude web application project well in typical spring mvc hibernate project we need to configure a lot many things for example so this is a java based configuration and in application context configuration file you can see a lot of beans created manually for example session factory if we use hibernate in spring mvc application then we need to configure these three bins that is session factory bin data source bin and then transaction manager bin okay if we don't use spring boot then we need to configure these three bins if we use hibernate in spring mvc okay so this is in all the typical spring mvc applications okay these three bins should be configured so apart from that uh, we are using uh, you know we are using a JSP or Timelip. For that, we are also need to configure Weave Resolver, right? So that I have defined in WebMUC config class. So look at here. In this project, I have used JSP, so I have configured internal resource Weave Resolver for JSP. So this is a typical bin we need to configure when we use, uh, you know, JSP or Timelip as a view a layer. So apart from that, we need to configure dispatcher servlet. So there are different uh, approaches to configure dispatcher servlet. Like either we can configure dispatcher servlet in web.xml that is deployment descriptor, or we can you know configure dispatcher servlet using Java based configuration. Okay, so just understand like without Spring Boot, we need to configure these bins for Spring MUC project. So this is the typical configuration. Okay. You, you can develop any kind of Spring MVC application and if you are using Hibernate then you need to configure all these things. When we use Spring MVC, we need to configure component scan, dispatcher servlet, view resolver, web jars and other things. And let's say if we integrate Hibernate or JP in our Spring MVC application then we need to configure data source bin, entity manager factory or session factory bin and transaction manager and other things. So these are the you know typical uh, configuration in all kind of Spring MVC application. So we can automate these configuration right because these configurations are you know almost uh, available in all the Spring MVC application. I mean in all kind of Spring MVC application we need to configure these things. Why not we, we automate you know these configurations? So instead of writing these configuration in all kind of Spring MVC application again and again, why not we automate these configurations well spring boot you know team has uh, you know comes with this new thought process they have automatically you know configured all these 
uh, all these configurations. So whenever Spring Boot finds Spring MVC dependence in a class path, then Spring Boot will automatically configure component scan, dispatcher solvent, resolver, and if we add Spring Data JPA or a Hibernate in a you know in a class path, then Spring Boot will automatically provide a data source bin, uh, entity manager factory or a session factory bin and transaction manager. All right. So Spring Boot auto configuration basically you know configures all these configuration for us whenever spring boot finds spring mvc dependency and hibernate dependency in a class path so this is the best example for spring boot auto configuration okay so spring boot brings in a new thought process like can we bring a more intelligence into this when spring mvc jar is added into an application can we auto configure some bins automatically okay so how about you know auto configuring a data source bin if spring if hibernate jar is on a class path how about auto configuring a data you know dispatcher servlet if spring mvc jar is available in a class path so this is you know the thought process of spring boot team and they came with uh, this you know auto configuration uh, feature like whenever spring boot finds spring mvc you know jar dependence in a class path then automatically configure dispatcher servlet view server and other stuff all right, this is a very very you know uh, important uh, uh, concept in spring boot guys try to understand spring boot auto configuration so just remember spring boot you know auto configuration attempts to automatically configure your spring applications based on the jar dependencies that you added in a class path and this is the best example like whenever you add a spring mvc in a class path then spring boot will automatically configure Component scan, dispatcher, servlet, view resolver, and if you add Hibernate or Spring Data GP, then Hibernate, you know, then Spring Boot will automatically configure data source bin, entity manager, factory bin, transaction manager, etc. All right. Now we understood Spring Boot auto configuration theoretically. In next video, we will see Spring Boot auto configuration in an action, and we will also see where is Spring auto configuration is implemented. All right, we'll explore more about Spring Auto configuration in next video. We'll deep dive into the Spring Boot application and we'll see the auto configuration uh, important classes and where exactly the Spring Boot auto configuration is implemented and who is the responsible to enable the Spring Boot auto configuration classes. All right, we'll learn a lot of about Spring Boot auto configuration in next video. Okay, I will see you in next video.